Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebing, and today I'm going to show you how to finish your quilts at home using feathers for a border. Um, if you watched our last feather video, you know that I am not very good at quilting feathers on my own with free motion, but thanks to the stencils from Full Line Stencil, Stencil with Hansi Creations, I am able to be a feather pro. And I wasn't originally planning on doing this stencil this month, I was gonna do a different one, but we had a demo in our shop and I wanted to show everybody how easy these stencils are to use. So I told them how god awful I am at quilting feathers. When I try to do it on my own, like one side will look good and the other side looks like a hot mess. Sometimes it's going in the wrong direction. It just doesn't look good. And But when I have a guide to follow, I can do it. So I popped this stencil open for the very first time in front of about 30 people and quilted a dang near perfect feather border with using this stencil for the very first time in front of people like, like you know, the pressure was on. So now I'm gonna use it for the second time in front of you guys, so you guys will truly see how easy it is to quilt using these stencils, knowing that I am just terrible at feathers otherwise, but I can do it with this. This border, it's called Flurry of Feathers. It is seven inches wide. So if you've got like an eight inch wide border, this would be perfect for it. You could of course quilt it across uh, your entire quilt as well and just do rows, but I think it would look really pretty in a border to sort of help fill that in. You can kind of just kind of even it out if you have like an eight inch finished border and then you've got about a half inch on either side and it would look really, really pretty and it will look like you sent it off to be quilted by somebody fabulous, but you did it at home on your own sewing machine. So let's get started. So as always, everything you need to go with this, you can get on our website at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I am working today, I always do test sandwiches for this. So you can pick some fat quarters that you regret buying, but solids work great, solids and near solids, because then you can really focus on seeing the lines and following the lines instead of on a busy fabric where might, that might be more difficult. You wanna pick something that your chalk is gonna show up against. Um, I'm using pink chalk here, even though this is pink fabric because the pink chalk is very light. And so it's gonna stand out because this is a really bold pink, but the blue would work great and the ultimate white would look great as well. The ultimate light will iron away. The blue and the pink you have to brush or wash off, otherwise you would heat sack that pigment. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take this off. It's like a bank um, stopper like you had when you were a kid. You're gonna take the chalk that comes with the pounce pad, you're gonna fill it all the way up to the top, replace your tab, and then bang it 50 times against a hard surface. Like you are really ticked at somebody, like your significant other did something very, very naughty, like using your fabric scissors to open a package that was plastic or something like that. Then the first time you're filling it, you're going to repeat that process. You're gonna fill it again and bang it 50 more times. When you're just doing a refill, then that's fine. You can just do it the 50 times. But what you want is for it to look really saturated. You can really see that pink all along here. And then when you swipe it across, it's really gonna transfer through because this material here, you can use this with any stencil, but they're really work great with the ones that were designed to go with it. This is like a screen printing material. So the part where you see the white line, that's a mesh that's gonna allow that chalk to go through and mark your quilt top. So I'm gonna show you how to mark it now. Just as an FYI, if these ever get wrinkled or you know they get bent a little bit during shipping or anything, then all you have to do is iron them flat and it'll be just fine. I just use the same cotton setting that I use for everything else. So I'm gonna start with getting everything nice and flat and I'm going to line this up with the edge. And I'm just gonna go straight down the center here because then I can use my hands and I'll have lots of um, fabric to hang on to, which will make it easier. But you could definitely get two rows of this easily from one fat quarter as well. So I'm just lining it up here and I'm kind of making it so that these registration marks are mostly even so that way I'm gonna be going nice and straight. And so the registration marks are pretty even with my folded edge there. So now I'm going to hold my fingers down here and I'm just going to swipe. It's called a pounce pad, so it's really tempting to like bang it, but you don't wanna do that. You just wanna do a gentle swipe, making sure you're hitting those registration marks. I'm gonna back myself up here to get those. All right, now before I take this off, I'm gonna peel up parts of it on the side to make sure that everything transferred well to there. 
and it could be a little better down there. So I'm gonna do that one more time here. And what I really wanna get is these little registration marks that look like targets, because that's gonna help us line it up for the next part. All right, so that transferred pretty well. We got a little bit of double vision happening here. No big deal, just pick which line you wanna follow because those lines are gonna go away in the end and no one will know that you were not exactly on. All right, so now for this part, I'm going to line it up so that these targets here, the registration marks, line up right on top of the ones below. And they're a little lighter, but it'll still work. And so I just kind of put my fingertips on them and pull it down until it's in line. And then I can actually see through here, you probably can't see at home, but I can see where the line is finishing and where the next one is beginning. All right, let's peek, make sure that went through just fine, and it did. And so now, here is where we marked our registrations, and here is where that join happened. So this is where it ended, and then it picked right back up when we added those registration marks. So that's what you want, that's your goal. Now I'm gonna get my machine ready for free motion quilting, and we're going to quilt this baby. Part of the reason why I was able to quilt this stencil almost perfectly the first time around is because it's a pretty easy feather. What we're gonna do is it's a pretty large scale, so you're gonna come around, and then there's no central spine to go to. So you're just gonna follow along, and then you're gonna travel down. And there's a little bit of backtracking, but not a ton. And if you wanted to avoid having to backtrack where you have to stitch on the same line, you can just give yourself a little bit extra space. But as long as you're quilting densely, it's not really going to matter too much. And if you use thread that blends with the fabric you're using, you're really not gonna see it at all. It's just gonna look like texture. I've got my machine set up. I put my free motion foot on my machine. That's a must have if you're going to be quilting. I'm gonna put my machiner's quilting gloves on. They help me grip the fabric so I can move it a little bit easier and reduce some neck and shoulder strain as I'm quilting. Let's get started. Normally I quilt with my hands like this on either side of my sewing machine, but so you can see a little bit easier what's going on, I'm gonna quilt more like this. That way this hand is not in the way of the camera, but do be sure to try to quilt like this. You wanna kind of quilt whatever you can fit in between the palms of your hands. I have my extension table on my machine. That helps as well, gives you a little bit larger surface to work with, makes it a lot easier and definitely worth getting if you don't have one and you wanna get serious about quilting on your home sewing machine. So as always, I'm gonna start by pulling my bobbin thread up to the top. This is not super critical for your practice pieces, but you wanna get in the habit of doing it so that way you don't have a big thread nest when you get to doing it for real. So what I like to do is just stitch in place a couple of times to secure those threads. If you want to do this for a show quilt, then you're going to want to tie off those threads. But for most applications, just stitching in place a couple of times is good enough and it will hold your stitches steady over washes and use. So normally I reduce my stitch speed to medium whenever I'm doing free motion quilting. That way I can move at a decent enough pace while still having my presser foot down quite far. And every time I get started doing this again, I've gotta rethink everything and get that rhythm going. Because it's not like it's something I do every day. I do it once in a while when I've got a quilt top that's ready to be done. And I just kinda have to retrain my brain on how to do that and get that rhythm going. And each design is a little different too. And your ability to whip through like Squirrels, for example, you might be a lot better at that than you are doing feathers, which I know is the case for me. All right, so I'm coming to a point and I'm losing control at this point. So I'm gonna um, stop with my needle down. It's always best to stop at a point if you can, because that is going to get it to a point where um, you don't have to worry so much about um, coming out of it and having it look 
wonky. If you're coming out of a point, you just stitch in place a little bit and then you can keep on going. I'm gonna check my tension now too. It's always good to start with the sample piece, even if you're planning on doing this later. One, to get the design down, and two, to get your tension right on your machine because that can vary a little bit with the humidity, with thread you're using, batting, all of that stuff. All right, everything's looking pretty good. So at this point, I've gotta go backwards and that's always hard for me to do on my home sewing machine because I just can't see. My machine is in the way of it. So I kind of like to peek around the side here and I can see a little bit better when I'm looking from this direction. So I'm actually gonna be leaning a little bit so I can see more of where I'm going. But it's always good to kind of have an idea of where you're going before you start heading there. And I'm actually kind of changing where I'm going here. So that was like a really long bit to do on your home sewing machine because the amount of control you have is kind of hard to keep controlled for that long of a swoop when you're working with such a small space. So I definitely want to stop at that first little peak afterwards. And really what I'm concentrating on here is that I'm getting nice, smooth feathers and that my stitch length is as even as it can be. So if you're moving everything at about the same pace, then your machine should sound steady. And if it sounds steady and you're moving it steady, then that means you're gonna have an even stitch length. All right, I think I can do this next loop here, and then I need to stop at the point and reposition my hands. All right, that is as far as I can go. I'm gonna slow my machine down a little bit more because I feel like those stitches are really close together. And again, that's just that rhythm that you have to get down every time you start and figuring out what works for you. Oh, that's too slow. Let me go up a little bit more. That's better. And if your stitches are too long, there's two ways to fix that. One, you can speed up your sewing machine and you can speed up and slow down how fast you're going. And sometimes it's gonna be a combination of the two in order to make that work. So when you're backtracking like this, you wanna stitch right on the line if possible. You always can also just add in a little extra space there on purpose. I'll do that on this one. So I'm coming down and now I'm on purpose quilting a little bit further out. It doesn't look as classic of a feather design, but this one is really more modern look anyway, so that would be fine. The key is whatever you choose to do, you have to be consistent at it so that it doesn't look like you made a mistake. So if you add it in a little space every single time, then do that and that's what it looks like you chose to do. If you try to echo every single time when you're coming out of that, then try to do that every single time and it will look like that is what you intended to do. All right, so I've got another big swoop here and then I'm almost done with the second part of it. These have a lot of those echoes on them, so we'll do that. Go over that. So the biggest reason for me why this is so much easier is I've got that line to follow. Like I know that I'm gonna do a curve here and I'm gonna come out. And it's just, you know, I've tried a lot of feathers and a lot of feather techniques and it just never really connected for me. And I think it's because I just, it would have worked if I would have drawn everything out because I just don't have that muscle memory. Because even though I've tried it, it's not like I've successfully done any of it um, until I started using these stencils. But since I've got the stencil, I've got that nice guide to go through. In this place, it's where I've kind of had that double vision. So I just get to pick which line I get to be in and it's all gonna go away anyway, so it really just doesn't matter. But I'm just trying to stay on that line. And I'm using white thread on a really pretty bright pink. So you're gonna see where I'm off. But if I were using thread to match, 
you wouldn't see that. You would just see the texture of the feather and it would look really pretty. All right, this is the point where it connects to the next part of the stencil. It was really seamless because we took the time to line up all those dots. I'm gonna stop here. I've been going for a long time through that pass, going back and forth, side to side, and I really just need to reposition my hands. So now it's a really good time to do it. I'm at that point. So when I come out of it, I'm gonna stitch in place a couple of times. So if you ever like come out of a point, you've got a gigantic stitch, it's because you didn't take time to get back up to the speed that you're comfortable with. And so if you get your needle moving at that speed before you start moving your fabric, then your first stitch is going to be the size it should be instead of a gigantic, huge stitch. When I get to the end here, I'm just gonna jog over to the next bit because if you were doing this on a real quilt, that would be in the part that gets covered by the binding. So you can just quilt right across and then continue on and no one will ever know. So this is it, this is the feather design. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Again, this is the second time I've done this feather and I'm admittedly pretty bad at feathers. And this turned out phenomenally. We started over here and followed. And so if I was using thread that matched, you would just see texture, especially if it were a busier print, you would just see the lovely little texture. Did you get a little funny? We had a thread break here and this is where the cat decided it needed to have some loving at that moment. So that feather got a little off, but you know what? Feathers aren't perfect in nature anyway. And I think this is pretty darn good for my second time using the stencil. So if you too have had issues with stencils or with feathers, quilting feathers, I would try these stencils because these are really good results. I'm really happy with how this is looking. I would put this on a quilt. I'm really excited with how this is turning out. And you can see that the majority of the chalk has already come off. And so you can't really even see where the lines were. It just kind of comes off as that presser foot comes up and down on it, which is nice because then you don't have too much removal later. And I'm just brushing it off with the tips of those machiners quilting gloves and it has gone away completely. And it's not going to come back. So you don't have to worry about that. So I really love this one. Again, it's called Flurry of Feathers. We have that, a lot of other stencils that you can check out. And we have a whole playlist of quilting quilts on your home sewing machine. So if that's something you wanna do more of so that way you can spend more of your money on fabric for more quilts rather than quilting by check, then check it out and you can become a fabulous quilter using just your home sewing machine. And the full line stencils and the pounds pads, we've got all of that over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting.